subject on tonight, an entanglement. An entanglement. Luke, that's in Luke 11, verses 14 through 28. Luke 11, verses 14 through, 10, through 28. An entanglement. Entanglement means the action or fact of entangling or being entangled. A compromise, complicated and or compromising relationship or situation. Uh, Luke, Luke teaches his, his, his uh, and Luke, Jesus teaches his disciples, uh, first in the first Luke, it teaches how to pray and we get our Lord's, get the Lord's prayer from uh, Luke 11. Uh, it teaches them how to pray and how to read that read their priorities in life and learning how to forgive others uh, and, and, and keeping the, the, the father as the head of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times we, we learn the, the, the Lord's Prayer we don't actually look at the words for, for which uh, he's teaching them. They ask them how they ought to pray. Jesus told them how they ought to pray. Uh, so it's, it's, it's making sure that we acknowledge God the Father mm -hmm. all our lives yeah. and making sure that we can love one another and, and, and forgive one another for each other's faults um, and making sure that we know that we are all a part of God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, God made us, we didn't make ourselves, so we ain't got no reason to hate on, to hate on one another. Yeah. Um, so, so Luke uh, teaches us that in the, in, uh, in the beginning of the chapter, uh, also in Galatians 5 and 1, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in liberty, where will Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Mm -hmm. uh, the yoke of bondage could be many of things. It could be one, one of the greatest things uh, that the yoke of bondage is, is it could be, is, is our own understanding of things, our own knowledge and and the way we think and feel the things supposed to be that keeps us in bondage. Y'all ever had y'all ever been in bondage? Y'all ever been in tangle? Yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all in tangle right now. <laughs> so so we, we 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 all have been in entanglements so, or you know and, and, and sometimes we just don't know what to do and how to come out uh, of those type of entanglements. But Jesus lets us know that that, that if we bring our burdens to him that he says his yoke is easy. Amen. Uh, Amen. He said, he, he, he cast all your cares upon him, uh, and you'll be free. So we, 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 we don't need to be entangled, entangled with, the, with the affairs of the world or allow ourselves to be so entangled that we forget about God and we forget how to love one another. Uh, in the season that of, of, of uh, election, uh, it's so easy to get ourselves entangled. And, and start hating on one another because each, each other position. Right. Everybody got a position, but that don't mean God is in any of them. So so we have to be careful how we entangle ourselves. So in our lesson in Luke 11 and 14, it says, and, and he was casting out devils, and it was done. And it came to pass, when the devil was gone out, the dumb spake, and the people wondered. Y'all never seen God come on somebody's life and, and bless them so much that you be like, hmm. You just don't understand how they got certain things. Or, you know, you know how to see some people that were just crazy you grew up with and, and they were just into stuff all the time. Then all of a sudden, they become something big or they, they attain wealth. And you be like, how did they do? They didn't even finish school. <laughs> And here I is, I went through here, all of this stuff. Don't get entangled with what other folks got. Uh, what other folks don't got. Just know that God is in the blessing, did not uh, If you humble yourself, you can be blessed too. But you have to humble yourself. And so we find in this case that if there was a devil there. And he had overtaken uh, someone. And, and Jesus cast him out. And it made the people just wonder. Uh, and they began to ask the question. And it says, and then it says, verse 15, but some of them said, he cast out devils through Bezalel, the chief devil. Mm -hmm. So in other words, they called him a devil because the devils obeyed him. Mm -hmm. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. so, you know, because he was a blessing to somebody, and because he was a blessing, uh, 
Somebody else called them a devil because they don't understand. See, they get entangled with, with their own mindsets because he didn't do it in a way that he, that, that, that they was taught to do it. Sometimes you got to move with, with, with the way that God tells you to do certain things. Uh, and sometimes you, it's nothing wrong with what you've been taught by your forefathers, but when God is speaking to you, now make sure God is speaking. And it ain't some type of a spirit. Because there are spirits out here. There are, there are fallen angels out here that talks to you. And, and they sound good. And they, are, they use the word on you. And they'll have you thinking. But if God ain't confirming, it ought to be a confirming word to where when he's talking to you and telling you to do something, some ought to, somebody ought to come and confirm that in your life. Or it ought to be confirming when somebody come and tell you something. They got come. Folks will come and tell you a whole lot of stuff. Don't y'all get in time with what folks tell y'all. Just wait on God to put it in your spirit. Amen. Wait on God to show you that it's him. Because I can tell you God said, give me a hundred dollars. Well. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do? You gonna get in time with my word? So we we'll look at it. If, if you don't have a hundred dollars, and I said God told you to give me a hundred dollars, then you know that ain't the God, and that's not the Father, because you don't even have a hundred dollars. <laughs> so you got to be careful out here how folks look at you. I just meet so many different people that'll tell you, I, I don't care how folks look at me, I don't care what folks think, you have to care. Uh, if you're in the ministry, or uh, if you're trying to be effective, in, in your ministry to teach others about Christ, you have to care how you look to your people, right. how you look in the neighborhood, how you look abroad. You have to care because your ministry won't be effective if you don't carry yourself in a godly way. Huh? Yeah, what it look like being standing on the side of the street corner telling you to put that wine bottle down and I got one in my pocket. Well, <laughs> It's not going to be effective. All right. uh, we, we have to understand that sometimes the, the word tells us not, let not our good be evil spoken of. And it also tells us to abstain from the very appearance of evil. So we have to care. We don't have to entangle ourselves with what folks think about us because you can't help for what folks think about you. you just, you, the only thing you can help is being what God has called you to be. All right. All right. Uh -huh. And so then he says here, in verse 16, he says, And others tempting him sought up a sign from heaven. Seems like to me, him casting the devil out of the dumb should have been the sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they, didn't re they, they rejected Jesus. They, 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 they couldn't uh, take the sign. They couldn't take the, 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 the blessing that he put upon the young man's life, they couldn't, they could, they couldn't receive it because they won't get nothing from it. You know how we do when somebody get happy or in church or somebody come to the Lord. What do you really be? You, you ain't got to say it, but what do you really be thinking about? You know, some folks come in and you can smell it on them and they run up to the altar and give their life to the Lord. What do you really think? I've had that to happen. And folks, they oh, they shouldn't come up there. They, no, leave them alone. Yeah. How you think they're going to get in there? Yeah. All right, come on. Leave them alone. Let them, let them, let them come to the altar. Let them, let, let, lay hands on them. Pray on them. Yeah. Pray that spirit out for them. Be a blessing under them. Mm -hmm. And eventually, God will clean them up if they, if they mean it. Yeah. You know, they, they, they want that help. God will clean them up. Don't reject them. Don't, 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 don't make them. Don't shame them and make them feel bad. The young folks, the old folks that have done things and, and they come to church and, and they, 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 they say they, they need prayer because they end something. Then the first thing you say, well, you ought to stop doing this and you ought to stop doing this. And you say it out to where they're ashamed about it. That's not the Lord's word. Sometimes God tell you to, re, to, to, to rebuke and to reveal, but make sure God is telling you that, not, not man. Don't entangle yourself with those spirits. Right. See, the, the devil, he's smart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you, you think you over him and you can put your foot on him. I don't care that you put your foot on him. <laughs> <laughs> he's 
He's smart. If he can fool the angels from their sitting positions in the kingdom that we don't know nothing of and get them to cast down here to earth, then he got to be smart to fool them that knew who God was. Right. Think about it. They served him and he fooled them. You don't have a chance without God's spirit. Uh -huh. If the devil trying to trick Jesus Christ, yeah. you think he do love? Yeah. Take him up on a high mountain. Yeah. I, he don't got harm yeah. Turn these stones red, man. You hungry, ain't you? What's wrong with that? Don't you entangle him? Jesus didn't entangle himself with the devil. The devil come to him, but he didn't entangle himself. He said, get ye behind me. We got to, we got to understand who we're working with. We have a worthy, a worthy adversary. He's not some bottle sitting in the corner where you let him out of the genie bottle. The devil's seeking to devour yeah. whom he came. Yeah. And if God gave him permission to tempt you or, 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 or to trouble you a little bit, then you need God to, to, come, to, to come to your rescue Amen. when the devil entangled himself with you. Amen. See, Christ, Christ died that we can have power against him. The flesh, the devil, everything. And he rose up with all power in his hand. And he sent his Holy Spirit that we can have power in this life. We don't have to entangle ourselves with no devil. I don't care if it's mama, daddy, sister, brother. But it's me, oh Lord. <laughs> I don't care who it is. You don't have to entangle yourself. Allow people to entangle your, your life. You know, once they start taking your peace. You need to start stepping away. Right? Yeah. yeah, don't entangle yourself. That's a trigger of an enemy. And then he says here, um, but he knowing their thoughts, said unto them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house fell. Let me ask y'all this question. What do y'all think going on in America? A division. Yep. Yeah. Straight line. A division. Nobody can agree on that. How can two walk together unless they agree? So you got to look and be prepared for whatever it is to come. Y'all worried about the Democrats? Y'all worried about the Republicans? Y'all need to be worried about what's going on over there in the Middle East. You know, that's right. They worried about the president that we have stepping down. If we go to war, he won't be able to step down. So we got to keep our eyes on God, the Father. You know, you vote for whoever you want to vote for. Mm -hmm. You know, but know that God is in control of whoever gets in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, they can make different laws to affect you. But if God allow it, he allow it. If he don't allow it, then he won't be. But we need to keep our eyes on the Father. On Jesus, on, on Jesus Christ and his word so that we can be prepared for whatever, for whatever is to come. So Jesus is telling them that if I'm, if I'm visible or if I'm at legion with the devil, then how can I cast them out? I'll be dividing myself. Some of us do the same stuff when we try to serve God and serve ourselves at the same time. You can't. You need to pick a position. Either serve yourself or serve God. Amen. Huh? That's right. Either serve yourself or serve God. It, it's, it's, it's a matter of, of, of knowledge to know that when we come into the church house, we come in to worship and to learn of God. Yeah, right? Yeah, well, how come so many people just come in? All right. <laughs> you can't wait to get out. Come on out and serve yourself. And when you get ready to worship God, then you come in. Because if you sit back watching your clock, yeah. thinking about things what you're going to do when you get ready to leave, when you leave out, and you kids can't wait to leave out, you're wasting your time in here. Yeah. 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 You can't serve to God. Right. Then he says here, uh, if Satan is also divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Y'all see this? So you mean tell me the devil got a kingdom, he got some people under him? Yeah. 
In order to have a kingdom, you got to have some servants there, right? You got to have some warriors there, right? And then he said, because if ye say I cast out devils through Beelzebub, and if ye and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, shall they be your judges. So in other words, he's saying the people that y'all are following, how are they doing things that they doing when they acting like the devils too? All right. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. They acting like the devils too, but they want to call you a devil because you're doing the things of God. Uh -huh. huh? But you're not no devil. You're doing the things of God. They just want to serve themselves, so they call you that and bring it down. Actually, when people entangle themselves with you and ask you these crazy questions and this argumentative all the time, what they're trying to do is make you mad so that you can say something so they can run back and say, you say it is. Y'all hear what that preacher, he cussed me. They ain't gonna tell that part how they aggravate you. Then he says here, but if I, with the finger of God, y'all see that? Where did he place himself? Did he place himself as the head of anything? He said, but if I, with the finger of God, you see what I'm saying? He was given the acknowledgement that God is doing this, not I. Huh? So we got to be careful how we always say, I did it, I did it. When God helped you, you got to admonish God Amen. in all situations. Admonish God. Um, because you do nothing on your own. Amen. God can take the very breath. I've seen times where I went to go do things and couldn't even remember where I was. Right. Huh? i seen times I wanted to get up, but I was too sick to get up. Mm -hmm. But God saw to it. It won't the medicine. It won't me. It won't the doctor. I don't care if he put in 50 stitches All right. All right. in you. It's God to keep that wound closed. Yeah, that's, right. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. That's right. yeah. That's right. yeah. It's God to keep that wound closed. Amen. So we got to always say, God. Amen. He said, if I, with the finger of God, cast out them, no doubt the kingdom of God is well. Come upon you. So he, he laid claim to who he is, but God had sent him, right? Mm -hmm. And then he said, when a strong man um, um, keep his place, his goods are in what? Peace. Peace. So are you strong or not? Or are you entangling yourself with the world? Are you being vigilant? See, a strong man, he always watching. He always looking around. You're a strong woman. She's always watching and ready. For some trouble. Y'all ever seen something that had them old bad kids? <laughs> <laughs> Seems like mama got eyes behind her head. <laughs> She's always watching. Why? Because she got to be strong. Because if she ain't strong, them little, them little kids going to take them over. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll do some stuff, won't they? Y'all know how y'all would. <laughs> it says, but but when a strong, when, when they stronger, then he shall come upon him. And overtake him, he taken him from all his arm, wherein he trusted, and divided his spoils. Think about it now. Jesus cast out a demon from someone. Mm -hmm. That spirit came in and overtook him and took his life for his own. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. And so when somebody, the devil, he's trying to come against you and he's trying to take what you got that God has blessed you. It don't belong to him, but he's trying to take it and he's trying to divide it up with his minions mm -hmm. or whoever is following him, the fallen or whatever demonic beings or whatever you want to call them. He's trying to take what God has blessed you with, and and that includes the very thought, spiritual thoughts that you have, the word that you got. He'll take it. Mm -hmm. Think about how quick he do it. You mess around and somebody, you entangle yourself with some of these folks, 
They can make you so mad you know, say or did something before you thought about it. Y'all never been like that? Oh, yeah. huh? <laughs> you get all the words that speak out of you. Yeah. You don't even know who you is. You be so mad all you see, you be like the bull, or you just see red. <laughs> That's the devil taking what God has placed inside. Think about it. All of us, all of us in here get angry. But the words that be angry but sin not. All of us get angry. And, and when you angry, you forget about what the word is. Yeah. I'll tell you something else. If you feel, you will run and forget about God. Yeah, then you scared. Uh -huh. I seen folks get so scared they can shake. <laughs> they can't even run. They in one place. Just shake. Right. So we, we have to be strong in the Lord. And we have to stand firm on God's word. Uh -huh. And we have to stand firm on our belief structure of God's word. Not, uh, not, not some fable that somebody told me, but I'm talking about God's holy word. We got to be strong in the word. So when the devil come up against us, he can't come in and divide the spoils. Amen. That's right. Amen. Then he says here, uh, what is it, verse 23? Yeah. He that is not with me is what? Yeah. I wonder who he's talking about now. Yeah. He's he talking to everybody. He's talking to his disciples. He's throwing a rock and he's curving and hitting everybody. That's right. He's talking to everybody. He that, he that is not with me is against me. Mm -hmm. And he that gathers not with me is scattered. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He let them know, you got to leave me alone. Either you're going to help me or you ain't going to help me. Because right. he was here to help folks. Mm -hmm. Not to ask all these questions, all these crazy questions and look at, they looking for a sign. And they don't call them a devil. Then they say, give us a sign. Mm -hmm. Well, you need a sign for if I'm a devil. <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> That's how he said. Right. Yeah, yeah. Then he says here, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, right? Seeking rest. And find none. He said, I will return to my house whence I came out. That's why we can't entangle ourselves. That's another reason here why we can't entangle ourselves too much with the affairs of the world or with things of life simply because those things that had us before we got salvation, they still here. Uh -huh. They ain't gone nowhere. Whatever you like before you attain salvation, whatever your personality was like, it's still in you. You were born again in the spirit. But your flesh, if you didn't have a four fingers before you got saved, you still ain't got the four fingers. It's just the way it is. And so we, we, we got to be careful how we allow ourselves to get entangled and make it start thinking about things. Yeah. How things used to be. Man, before I did this, man, I had this, I had that. Man, I'm going back out here, shoot food. I'm going to go back out here, throw the dice. I'm going to go back out here and drink. I'm going to go back. It'll make you go back. That's all a backslider is. Yeah. If you and I thinking about things that the way it used to be, you remember how it used to be when you had a good time. Y'all had a good time out there. And you don't need to say you didn't have a good time. So bad times happened, bad times came from you had a good time. But while you were having a good time, you were having a good time. And you entangle yourself with everybody else that was having a good time. Nobody want to be around somebody that was being grumpy and won't have a good time. All right, come on. Come on. That's right. They rained on your party. Yeah, you got one person at a party, you have a birthday party, and everybody's dancing, everybody's having a good time, and you got one person just sitting there like this. Your eyes and your spirit are going to go to that one person. Because one thing you're going to wonder, what's wrong with him? Who invited him to my party? He put shade on my party. We can't even have a good time. He ain't got to say, he or she ain't even got to say nothing. All they got to do is act a certain way. And then your mind is out on that person. That's the way it is in life. We got to keep our mind stayed on Jesus. Because it don't take but that one person, that one situation to get our minds off Jesus, then you're at the bar. <laughs> you don't go back. 
simply because you didn't keep your mind. And you don't need to give self at it. Whatever you don't do, you doing or done did, and you don't got your mind off Jesus. Guess yeah, what? You ain't got to go run to everybody about it. All you got to do is step right on back in any place and get your mind straight right back on Jesus. Repent of it. Praise and move on. Praise Praise Lord. Lord. Don't entangle yourself with your stuff you don't need. Praise the yeah. Lord. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Yeah. Sometimes I eat food. Mm -hmm. Food that I love. Right. Tear my stomach all the pieces. Y'all ever been like that? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I don't eat it for a little while, but I'm going to eat some more sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and next time I eat it, it probably don't bother with me. Yeah. So, but that's the way it is. Yeah, you take some pepto bismol, you take some some Atlanta or whatever it is, you take them things and it help your stomach out and get your stomach right, you get it back up, you go right back to eating again, right? You don't just stop eating just because you got the best stuff one time. That's right. That's the Christianity the same way, a followers of Christ are the same way. Just because you don't got messed up in life, you done messed up, tore up, you lay down on the floor, in the ditch, I got mud all on it. Get up and rub the mud out and get up and come on back to church. Right? Don't let that stuff stop you out there. Yeah, That's why I had to. I don't talk about folks now, you know, because I, I, I don't worry about what they done done. I'm worrying about what they doing. Yeah. If they get themselves right with Christ, that's all I'm. That's all I'm concerned with. I don't care about they were drunk at 11 o'clock this morning. They can make it in the church and get their life back to Christ and repent of it. I don't care what they done did an hour before. Or I don't care what they what they might get into when they go home. That between them and they go. Mm -hmm. But don't entangle yourself to the point where it drives you from the church. Because me and the are. And we get to fight. I ain't going back to that church. That preacher ain't no good. The preacher and the deacons up in there fighting. I ain't going back to that. What that got to do with your salvation? That between me and him. <laughs> don't let that discourage you. Yeah, you, you stay with God. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You entangle yourself with the wrong thing. Because when you go somewhere else, they might not, you might not never see the argument. You might not never see the other entanglement over there. But they over there. Mm -hmm. they everywhere you go, people are the same. They the same. You said, no, you just wait a while. You'll see. You'll see. You'll start hearing and seeing some things. Then he says, uh, so, so the spirit comes out of the person, and now he's seeking a, for a place, to, he's looking for a place to rest, a place to, to mess up again. <laughs> he don't like a plain house. And then he says that when he comes, he finds the house swept and garnished. Yeah. You know, ain't this a good thing how God has cleaned you up, turned your mind around, you look like a million dollars in that part. Right. You say, well, I look like a million dollars when I was out there in the street. No, all your spirit won't write. All right. All right. But now you look like a million dollars. God has cleaned you up, got your mind straight. Now you ain't thinking about those old things out there. But there's a spirit that's right here. All right. You won't see him, but he right there waiting for the, right for the opportunity to come back into the house that been clean. I like a clean house. Yeah. I like it. If you go out there and wash your car today, I guarantee you some rain coming sometime ago. It happens like that, right? It's the same way when God bless you, you better be looking. God don't bless you with something, with help and strength, you better be looking. Because he's coming. The devil coming now. He's still cleaning out. He don't like it when God bless you. That's the first thing he told God when he was, he was God had a conversation with about Job. He said, you got a hedge around him. Right. <laughs> he done already looked, he done already been to the house and looked. He said, I can't get in there. Right. <laughs> I can't get in there. But if you move this hedge out the way, I get it out and make him cuss you. Come on now. But Job never cussed him. Right. But he was, the key thing is, he was looking. And Job had to entangle himself with the people that came by, his friends, his wife, even with the loss of his children. Ain't too many of us to take that. The loss of our loved ones, the way they lost them. 
and he had been he had been going and making sacrifice, but when he lost them, he didn't entangle himself with them. Amen. 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 That's right. He said, "Will I wait?" Yes. <laughs> he didn't say he would. He said, "Will I wait?" He asked that question. But at the end of all, he had more than what he had at the beginning because uh -huh. he didn't entangle his his train of thought. He didn't allow that to go where, where the people wanted him to go. They wanted him dead. Because why? Because it was a hassle taking care of him. You got somebody that can't move and they got boils all on, that means they leaking. That means after a while they be stinking if you don't take care of them. So, so they wanted him to go ahead on and die so they didn't have to take care of him. I move on. Then he said, 26, he said, then he goeth and take it to him, talk it to him, take it to him, seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. Uh, Y'all see that? And they enter in. They can't get in unless you let them in, right? right. They enter in. You know when you get drunk, you have all of them count. Y'all ain't never been drunk. Oh, Come, yeah. on, oh, yeah. Come on, now. Come on. Y'all ain't going to hold your head down. I see you. <laughs> When you get into stuff, even when you just get mad and angry with somebody, and you sit there, you say, hmm, I can do this to them. And I can do that to nobody I never know. Don't you have all those kind of thoughts? Yeah. When, you, when you entangle yourself with the wrong thing, the devil come and talk to you and he tell you how to do certain things. Yeah. And then once you do it and you get in trouble out there, guess what he does? Oh, <laughs> He'll turn his back on you. He won't have nothing to say. He'll turn his back on you. Then he'll send one of the people back and say, you know you shouldn't have did that. <laughs> but all the while he's talking to you. He's telling you how to get in and how to entangle yourself, how to make yourself look so bad to where you he hoping that you won't stand up and be a, and be a follower of Christ anymore. You know how some things we get ourselves into in, in life, it makes us feel like that, like we we ashamed and, and, and we don't want to, to people to look at us because we thinking that they are thinking about it. And 90% of the time, they don't even know what you done done. <laughs> you just you don't come come confidence of, of, of them looking at you and you say, oh, they know. They don't know nothing. They just know that you're acting different. <laughs> Then he says here, he says, more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. That means they stay. And then the last state of the man is worse than the first day. See, see, because he you you they let him get away one time. So now they're trying to kill him while he in the state he in. And then ain't just one spirit, it's a whole bunch of them in there. And they working together to kill you. Then he says, uh, and it came to pass as he spoke these things, a certain woman of the country lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the path which thou hast so. Mm -hmm. But he said, Yea, well, blessed are they that hear the word of God and Amen. keep it. Amen. Quit playing with God. Don't entangle yourself with that. Uh -huh. That's right. You got to stay with the word of God. Stay with the word of God. Don't worry about uh, stuff you done fell into. Get up out, get up out of it. Come on, come on to church. Don't worry about how folks look at you. I don't care if they look at that. I don't care if they got a video. Don't let that stop you from coming to church or getting back right with God. Don't worry about all that stuff. You repent and move on. Yeah, you move on. Any questions or comments? Well, God bless you. We're going we're gonna to ask you to stand as we pray, and we're going to let it out at this time. Father, we ask the Lord a special blessing over his life, Hallelujah. over his family life, yeah. and over the doctor's life that are working on him, Lord, yeah. and bringing him back to him. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. go with us, Lord, yeah. as we make it to our very oh, destination safely. Yeah. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
God bless you.